Well, let's get started. Um, my name is Matt Rakowski. Uh, I work at IBM in cloud area. Uh, specifically, I work in open technologies, which involves both open source and open standards. It's my goal to make sure we create healthy open source ecosystems around open standards where possible. Um, and OpenWhisk is um, ripe for collaboration and involvement uh, to improve uh, and advocate for serverless computing, event-driven programming. Um, so my job here today is, after, if you saw Carlos's last session, uh, you understand the workings of OpenWhisk to some degree. And I want to try to take you through the many repositories that make up what I call the uh, OpenWhisk project ecosystem and entice you uh, to try to connect the work that you're doing or your interest areas to some aspect of the project to get you to, to think about contributing, uh, if nothing else, your ideas, um, hopefully some, some code and integrations um, and, be, and towards becoming uh, active committers who uh, can carry forward and improve um, serverless computing for everybody. So to level set, um, open with to make sure in the, in the correct room for people who did not attend the last session is, um, you know, open with is a, is, a, is a serverless platform. So whisk is a cooking term um, and I have a little graphic I created uh, where we want to bring together the, the functional components of applications from many different sources. Wherever you have events, wherever they come from, um, we want to be able to bring those together through serverless, uh, whether it be from IoT, mobile, traditional um, data storage, um, stateful data, um, cognitive analytics. We want them to come together through serverless because it makes sense, it's highly efficient, and it removes, and a lot of the complexity you'll see in each of these areas is removed if you can approach it from a serverless uh, functional standpoint. Uh, again, why are we taking the tour? <laughs> we got a lot of repos. I have 28 plus or minus, luckily I put plus or minus, because I added two repos yesterday. <laughs> um, so, and I'll, I'll touch upon those where, where appropriate. Um, again, spark your interest. One of those, you know, we don't want, it's, uh, we have a platform. Some aspects of, are rather imposing. There might be in languages you don't want to learn, but there are many areas for integration um, uh, on, on the periphery for tooling and integrations. Um, I want to explain where the code, you know, relative to the architecture, where it lives in each of the repos. And I want to highlight uh, the functional aspects of what's going on in the code and provide some call to action give you some ideas of things that we've talked about, uh, I have, Carlos and others have talked about, where we would like to expand new feature sets and to see if these things resonate with everyone here. So this is my ecosystem view of OpenWhisk. Um, so again, we have the core, which Carlos took you through in the last session, um, and that largely lives in one repository I'll cover. Um, we have a set of, we have a command line uh, family of, of things that interact through RESTful APIs. Uh, we have tooling, um, which I'll cover uh, each of those areas as well. We have a, a catalog, which we split out last year from OpenWhisk to try and, we have things that are called system actions, which are shared actions, uh, basic connectors. So anything that should be intrinsic in the catalog when you load OpenWhisk to compose with, we want to put into a, a common catalog. Um, we have uh, uh, external resources, um, education materials, uh, playgrounds, hackathon materials, things like that, workshops. Um, we have our website, um, which, is, which is still, so I, I should say, I should thank uh, Daniel Gruno uh, and also Carlos for working over the last two weeks to take all of the uh, repos that I've been all be referencing here into Apache organization from OpenWIS org. The only standout is still, our website is still in the old org, but we need to create some, uh, we need help there um, to, to take the Jekyll, um, Jekyll compilation and get it moved and pushed over um, to its home in Apache. So once we get that automation through Jenkins or something that, you know, we'd, 
we'd love to have that moved over as well. Uh, we have packages. So you know, we have this catalog of, of some actions and some smaller packages, getting started, some helper things. But when we have full-blown integrations, we have something called a package concept. If you have actions and feeds and triggers and the things that allow you to connect to these external data sources, event sources, we want them to have their own top-level packages. And you know, the questions at the end of the last session were about what about MQTT and other things. Well, we want packages. We want uh, packages that we curate and we have as top-level repos um, that encourage integrations. Uh, and we have samples. So as we bring some of these workflows together, um, um, if you come to our booth, you see things like um, uh, part ordering or check processing. We'd love to have samples that show people how they can deploy uh, with one click using our, uh, one of our tools to um, get people started to, to show a meaningful sample application that perhaps speaks to a workflow they have in their, in their company that they can use or, or use as a derive from a basic example and, and customize to their needs. So these are the areas I'll go into. So WIS core. So it's most of WIS core, uh, the controller specifically is written in Scala. If you look into the repository, um, primarily what I think of it as, it's, it's besides the, the controller, which manages all the WISC entities, the actions, the triggers, the feeds, with the stateful databases and, works, and has the uh, configurations uh, that it uses in the console store. Besides that, I view it as a big deployment, uh, build deployment uh, repo. So all, this, all the things you need to run WISC and get going are in the core. Ansible scripts, um, Gradle build stuff, and things of that nature. And all, all of it is towards containerizing each of these components. So these are things you'll find in the core. Uh, I'm not a Scala person, I'll admit it. Um, I, I only rudimentally know basic things about Ansible to get things going and how things deploy. So I spend most of my time on the periphery, not in this, in this area myself. But if this is what you want to work on, things like Carlos was talking about, we're doing integration, uh, trying to do with Elasticsearch to try and create a generic like Lumberjack MT um, output from all of the containers and all of the componentry so you can gather that data and analyze it however you want. We need help there. Um, documentation is always key. We have lots of deployments, uh, uh, different uh, deployment uh, target environments and things like that. We'd love to add more, as, uh, as Carlos was saying. We'd like to improve the documentation for them, the testing for them, uh, those things. Um, we've, we've talked about things like replacing, you know, replacing our key value source. Somebody came by, it was Peter, I can't remember who it was. You know, can we have, if we run this in Kubernetes, can we, how can we plug in a, a, a etcd uh, uh, as a source of truth? So these things, you know, we'd love to have help with in the core repository. Um, and also message queuing, you know, how, you know, can we replace Kafka? Can we replace it with a different queuing mechanism? Is there a need to? Um, we'd like to question the system. We'd like people to come to us and question the system and engage us in our Slack channels and our dev lists and things like that and get answers and, and document those answers and, and come to a consensus of what we might want to do in terms of architecture. So I've started talking ahead of myself. Um, so in terms of what we have in Ansible, we have local distributed Mac. Um, with local, we have we support um, Windows and Ubuntu, na the native in installations. You can have your your Couch uh, DB is what we have in the open source offering, as your store your, for your, all your objects, your entities, your state. Um, you know, replace that if you want. See if we can have some generic DB connector to store in your database of choice. Uh, recent activities, we added support for web actions. Um, with different uh, HTTP header variants and MIME types. Uh, we separated out the command line. That's still ongoing work. I hope it would have been completed by now, but we're still working on that. Um, so we want to basically uh, make the command line more configurable, pluggable, maybe look at other command line frameworks we use uh, for, for future. I mentioned the logging. LogMet is a source that we want to, to work towards, but the mechanism for getting data to Elasticsearch um, is through some, through some open source projects. Uh, so being able to hook in, hook, hook in there is a possibility for other targets. Um, and just general help wanted. Uh, I mentioned documents. We'd love to have performance testing. 
Uh, I didn't list, uh, we have a set of performance test suites in IBM we'd love to, to move out to open, but we need to figure out how to stage those tests, how do we automate those tests in the Apache infrastructure. If people have experience with that, we'd love help. Uh, the UI, I mentioned from the audience, um, we, have, we have the command line, that's great. But when you look at um, commercial offerings from like uh, Azure or even Amazon, they have a, a web UI in, in, in public. We'd love to have somebody with, who's excited about taking our command line experience and things like our debugger and making them available in an in a open web user interface that people can use and customize as well. Drag and drop composition from our catalog. Um, and always it's about performance and hardening of the code improve security, how, does it, how do we make it easier for uh, taking our namespacing model and applying maybe other security models to it. Maybe our namespacing model for putting entities into the system is, needs to be challenged, who knows? Um, people who are dealing with security or applying this to different target platforms need, need to come to us, engage us, and help with how we improve those things. Um, the CLI, uh, this is pretty, pretty simple. Um, again, HTTP REST uh, calls for managing all the WISC entities uh, and SDKs. We have SDKs, which, we'll, which you'll, you'll see. Um, we have multiple language variants. So if you want to integrate, which we do for different tooling, different IDEs or whatever it might be, we have different languages, uh, Swift, uh, Python, JavaScript. Uh, the, the language that uh, we primarily look to support is Go language uh, in terms of being the starting point for adding new functionality, new APIs, and the other repos are kind of be, are, are kind of um, after the Go the Go stuff. Um, API gateway support that's an example of recent activities. Um, Adobe and and uh, IBM worked in collaboration with others um, to create an API gateway uh, project under the OpenWest family, and Carlos demonstrated some of that. Um, and we'll get into specifics about needs there. But we, you know, that functionality was experimental in the APIs until a few weeks ago, and it took a lot of effort to go through the code to make sure that, that the naming and the, the experimental tag for that uh, left the system and it became a full-blown full integrated function. I guess that reminds me that something that we've been talking about, Carlos and I, this week is about releases. A lot of our focus the last few days uh, in attending sessions here at Apache is you know, we need an a automated release mechanism for OpenWhisk, and we were, we were debating what things and how we do it, and which things we include in a release, and how we version and those things. So these are things we help, for people in Apache who have done these things for larger projects especially, we'd love, we'd love help with. Um, you know, we'd love to, when we uh, had a, a, took the experimental off of it, we'd love to have created a point version and pushed a binary out someplace and notified people and, uh, and those things. Um, we want more pluggability in the APIs. Um, we, the, right now we use a, a Cobra framework. Um, we'd and we'd love more SDKs, figure out how we make a generic SDK more pluggable and less, write less code when we, when we adopt a new SDK. Uh, is there a need for other languages? What's the value of that? Should we reduce the languages for that matter? Who knows? Um, we want people to, to work where it's uh, important. Are, are, do we have, uh, is anyone using Python? I don't know. Who's using Python? So uh, should we support it? So those questions we want the community to, to tell us. And, but if there's need for other tooling, we want to add it. So again, I, I talked about the Cobra framework. That's the basis. So most of the language specific things, they, they basically compose the actual format of the HTTP REST call, the actual command line that you see in, with the help and the feedback and the prompting, the interactive prompting. Um, uh, that is in the base CLI component, so the OpenWhisk CLI repository. Um, we've been, again, we're doing the separation. We're authoring lots of integration tests. It's been interesting because, you know, it was very convenient for us in our automated integration testing in OpenWhisk, where the CLI and Opus lived together, that we could, and once the CLI was installed in, in Travis or Jenkins or whatever, that we'd be able to run lots of cool integrations, tests, and things like that. But now that they're separated, it complicates things. Uh, in terms of um, uh, cloning the repos and, 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 and installation orders and things like that. So um, again, documentation is always a need for any project I listed here specifically. 
um, as our APIs change, our, 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 our interrogate our, the help we, we output when you enter a command that's wrong. You know, maybe our help needs to be better. We'd love to have better interactive prompting, but the big thing for me is interactive debugger. We have a debugger project that we'd love to become part of our existing command line and be able to work not just uh, locally, but maybe work remotely. That's gonna, that would be a significant uh, step forward in something that I've seen from uh, Microsoft a uh, Azure, their cloud function project. They now have integrated debugging from the client to their backend platform. So if these things that interest you from, a, from an outside in, what do we need to enable on the back end to do debugging? Uh, those type of things. Catalog, I mentioned that. Um, so so, so what, what's the value of, of, we have a catalog repo, which has, is basically, it's a, um, like I said, it's a, a um, list that we've of curated um, actions and basic feeds and things um, for s some services. You'll see like um, things like uh, forwarders, retry. Um, we have some Git stuff, Slack, you know, but they're very basic. So, you know, are, are, do these belong in, in a generic catalog? Do they need more curation? Do they need more attention? Um, like the weather one, I mean, that API set is quite large. We only support a small set of the APIs there. So, and those APIs change. Maybe it needs to be elevated to its own package is, is a top level repo. Um, which things you know, should be built into the system, to the WISC system? Are there other types of basic things you might not want to do for security checks or who knows? What needs to be deployed into the system catalog, uh, if you will? There's not been a lot of activity here. Um, again, we have a lot of samples, a lot of them are in Java. So a lot of these things people might want written in a different language. So we'd love to, for anything in the catalog, we'd love to have um, not it available in JavaScript, but um, have examples for all of these things that they choose to use Python or whatever language. We'd like to have it one, uh, an equivalent for each of the languages. We have a subdirectory structure that supports that. Uh, and of course, documentation for each of the individual individual actions and packages. Um, I'd love to have this use WIST deploy. So again, we have a new packaging spec and, and uh, that takes a manifest. All these could be enabled to use single click deployment and conditional deployment. Um, so maybe there's some interact, when, when people go to install the catalog, you could perhaps have a way to say which packages you want and which packages you don't want for a target installation, make it interactive. So those are some, some ideas even for this repository. API Gateway, what's inside? Um, basically, when you ask API Gateway guys what it is, it's basically a, a giant build thing, and that's kind of like a view OpenWhisk. It's how you build all these modules that comprise a, a um, framework for, for an API Gateway uh, set of services, um, leverages exi existing technologies uh, in terms of recent activities. Um, OAuth 2 support, uh, cores support, uh, cross-origin stuff. Um, profiling and tools and performance measurements were added recently. Help wanted, um, uh, the focus is performance. So the tooling was just added, but we need really a focus in tooling and instrumentation to help figure out where we can improve performance. Um, we want more OAuth providers supported. Um, and and we, we lack some of the, a lot of deployments like Kube and Mesos. Um, they, 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 they don't include API uh, Gateway currently, so we need support for adding um, the dockerization, containerization of, these, of the API Gateway service as part of those deployment scripts, those Ansible scripts. Um, and I forgot, configurable caching for web actions. So um, adding some caching support, uh, intelligent caching support at the edge. So. Uh, WIST deploy, I'd love to spend a lot of time on this because this is what I have a small team working on. Um, so, it's, so, so basically we want people to be able to incorporate serverless computing and this programming model into larger level applications. So if you, if you went to other sessions, there's you know, Terraform. Uh, if you work in Amazon, there's CloudFormation. We'd love to have, and we have a manifest that describes open WISC entities as resources and our compositions, how we create sequences, and how we, how we take outputs of one action and put them into another action. We can describe these, and all the properties, the configurations, can be described in a, in a YAML format, which I'll, I can 
uh, show you a little snippet of so you get an idea. But this is how we automate. Um, so the command line is not great. And again, ask for a UI, that'd be great. But you know, for automation, for large scale deployments to different target platforms, a, a YAML based manifest is desirable because you can plug these things into a Terraform. You can plug them into something like a CloudFormation. So it's essential. And also automatic. So we want to, um, I'll touch upon this maybe a little bit, but uh, I'd love to be able to um, work on a registry where we actually have people just have repos of WISC enabled packages. And we can just point to that repo, find the manifest, and be able to have some people just, we can zip up the, um, uh, uh, that, that package there, d determine the dependencies that package has for whatever language, target languages, what JavaScript, uh, JavaScript packages are needed, Python packages are needed, zip them all up, send them in one fell sweep to the, have them deployed to an OpenWISC um, platform server. Help wanted tool chains. So as, as we zip these things up, we want to figure out what other things we need to do for different language constructs. We, have, we want to have a generic tool chain that we invoke. So if we know if we're working in uh, JavaScript, we run npm install, and we have to we have consideration for binary support. Um, so we need to run these things perhaps in Docker containers on the target for the target binary. What tools do we need to do to be able to, to bring in all the dependencies? Uh, compile them if necessary and for the correct environment, pull the correct packages for the correct target environment, and create a zip file without the user having to, to, to do anything. So that's, I'm asking personally for that help since my team's working on that. Um, integration with the WIS CLI, that's a goal for us in the next month or so. Uh, we'd love help in that area, again, in determining how we make the CLI more pluggable and how we integrate things like WIS deploy into it, and perhaps we, how we make the CLI and was deploy available to things like uh, Terraform or, or other orchestration tools, even like the ARIA Tosca project, which just got incubated last September. So how are we doing on time? Not bad. So with deploy, again, um, we have a specification. So um, we'd love to collaborate on the specification as well. I think that there's a lot of um, standardization around serverless, some discussions happening. I know at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation with Google, there's been other serverless um, proposals for projects there. I think that the standardization can happen at many levels. You know, OpenWISC has a programming model uh, around actions, triggers, and rules. I think that's it's a very robust model. I think that a starting point would be creating a working a specification on triggers and events. I think if I talk to people like Stackstorm. And, and other people who have similar serverless concepts, Adobe, our partners in Apache. Um, we'd love to be able to standardize on what a, an event description is and a trigger, a trigger description is and how we formulate rules from those two things. If we can define at the edge when events, wh how we can consume events in a packaging, a basic packaging format around that, we could actually have um, this, this packaging format or standard be used cross uh, platform, even for, for those who don't use OpenWhisk as their source code uh, target, their running source code target. So yeah, I, I forgot to put a little sample uh, manifest here. So hello world. So basically, if you, uh, it's also about versioning as well. So if we, the, the tooling is for undeployment. So we want to be able to do update and, uh, and undeploy over time. So we actually um, traverse all your actions and all your packages, and we create a graph. That's underway right now, the code's underway right now. And when you want to undeploy it, you can actually traverse, reverse the graph and, uh, and undeploy your, your uh, event-based application. A lot of people ask me about complexity of these applications. The complexity is removed through descriptions like in this package manifest and can be visualized in the UI somehow. And again, uh, how do we compose? This is the only way now to describe your inputs and outputs. So if you want to compose an output of one action to another action, this is how you make sure we do validation. So the tool will be able to tell you this action can be composed with this other action because the outputs and inputs match each other, the, the data types and things. So uh, I think this is an exciting direction for how we build out an application ecosystem and get some, uh, be able to manage more complex systems based upon this event-driven model. A debugger. Help, <laughs> help. Um, um, WIS debugger uh, was a great 
um, was, I said was, it is a great tool, um, but I, at some point in the recent past, it stopped working. And uh, I haven't had time to look at it. I don't, no one on our team has had time to look at it. If, if debugging is your thing, this is all about local debugging. So this is about taking your action, uh, debugging it locally before you deploy it to a server. And there's probably something very small that needs to be fixed, but documentation. There is no documentation. So um, we have some very smart people who created, a uh, few smart people created the debugger. Um, they, they're off doing other things and other projects. And we'd love to have somebody pick this up. And again, like I said, integrate this into our command line. So if, if, this, if you know Node.js, and you, can, and you can go through the code and help us fix that. We'd love the, uh, help fixing that. I think there's a, some small thing that's missing. Um, uh, what's inside DevTools? So DevTools is uh, another person on my team has been working on DevTools. Basically, this is kind of like the, um, if you have an idea for a deployment or some tool, some integration to some IDE or some other client or something, this is where we get you started. We'll say, we'll create a subdirectory under this repository and, get, and go. Currently, it primarily houses the um, Docker Compose and Kubernetes work we've been doing. Um, I said I created a new, new, two new repos, yes, repos yesterday. One of them was for Kubernetes. So we've gotten to a point where the, our Kubernetes work under DevTools has reached a point where we believe we want to promote it to a top-level repository. So the Kubernetes stuff uh, is going to go to the top of a repository so the people who want to know, find Kubernetes, they see a repository named Kubernetes and know that's where the work's being done and we create dedicated documentation for, for that effort. Um, Docker Compose needs some help. Uh, Adobe's been kind of um, um, leading the charge on that, uh, on that work, but I know that, we, that uh, the, the developers there would love some help uh, as well, better documentation, and we'd love to promote that as well as Kubernetes to a top level repo in the future. Um, playground, Xcode. Um, so, uh, so basically these are, again, tooling integration with, with different uh, de uh, developer client tools. Um, as Xcode source editor extension. So it's this extension so you actually can code and have interaction with the command line, and, uh, uh, familiarity with the formats and, and syntax in your favorite IDE client side tool, development tooling. Um, it's still experimental code. I mean, we had some very good, good people who, who developed the code, got it working, but as far as keeping it going, version updated with what's current in OpenWhisk as we add new things to OpenWhisk, new parameters, new APIs, new things, we, we need somebody to, to keep these things maintained. If these, if these target the VS, for both VS Code and Xcode, if you have a target uh, uh, developer tooling that you, want, that you feel strongly about supporting, we'd love to have your help making sure we're, this stuff is kept current. Um, general ad, general advo advocacy for this tooling stuff. Uh, VS Code, I kind of touched upon that already. Same, same thinking, but for Visual Studio. Um, update docs, we need, again, developer owner for this to keep it going if VS Code's your thing. Um, and integration testing, I, you know, I guess that holds true for both Xcode and all the things, all these toolings we don't have, really have integration testing for. So um, when things don't work or things fall out of scope or we lack support for something, we'd love to have integration tests tell us that. We'd love to have Travis or Jenkins tell us this is not working anymore with oh, this change in OpenWhisk. So these are things we'd love to add that if you're familiar with you know, testing and, and automation uh, that you could help us with greatly to let us know, hey guys, this needs some attention. It's not, it's not kept current, it no longer works. So uh, help there. So packages, so when packages um, reach a status where, where they get a lot of discussion on the dev list or in Slack, and they have, they're, they're, they have um, different people using it for different purposes, we want it elevated to a top level package. Again, every package I, I talk about, we don't, have, we're, we don't have a manifest for. So we have the WISC deploy tool, and we'd love to add manifests for all these things that describe uh, all the things that get installed as part of the package. Right now they all have bash scripts to install, which call the command line uh, HTTP REST calls directly. We'd love to have it just deployed through one click and, and out of the repo directly. Um, so cron jobs, all, all the scheduling stuff, batch jobs, that's where you have alarms. Uh, we've been talking about you know, making this part of the default install with the catalog. So uh, again, I'm, my, my hope is the catalog becomes just a more of a, a uh, what I'm working towards a distributed registry. So the catalog would, project might become more of a, 
a registry project, much like in, in the sense of NPM, where we actually have people submit packages and the packages can actually live elsewhere. And we actually maybe, uh, and we take that, we actually run integration tests on that. They submit it to our registry and they have a WISP deploy manifest. And we can actually run some uh, integration tests against the package, automate those and, and version them and making sure that they work with the current version of, of OpenWIS. I'd love to have uh, registries of packages provided by other companies uh, for different target applications or environments. And I see this as a, a key growth area uh, in general. So, so um, instead of having to worry about um, promoting packages or demoting packages of the catalog, we just have a registry and it's a distributed registry and we don't worry about that anymore at all. And it's all, and through um, testing and tooling, we know which packages are well tested and version and work with which, which uh, OpenWIS uh, platform releases. Uh, Kafka, uh, again, Carlos touched up upon that. I think that uh, of all the things I would ask for from, from people at this conference, and I heard MQTT, um, um, I want, multi, I want, to, I want s support from people for multi, what we call multipliers. I want for, for people who have data sources, data stores, databases, different types of databases. We need packages, dedicated packages that integrate with more and more data sources and queues. That's the future. Even data sources I talk to in serverless environments, platform environments, they're being offered in cloud. What they're doing is they're dumping all their events into some queue or another. And it's up to you. Um, and they're basically saying, you subscribe to the events. We're dumping every single event into the queue on data, every database change, every document change, every field change, every index change. You figure it out. So I'd love to have even more intelligent um, packages that maybe build on top of queuing packages that can filter out events. Um, and be able to, when I compose my applications, and I'm getting millions, literally millions of events per second, um, how do I filter this out to just the events I need for my database for the, my specific action? Those are things that we'd love to have generic packages for um, um, before we fire, and so we can find the correct action, make sure they get just the data they need, and we don't waste a lot of, um, uh, of time sending act, uh, events to actions that they, they can't use. Push notifications. Uh, this is this is cool. You know, this is another example of um, um, of a common multiplier. Everyone wants what you know. Chat bots are popular, of course. Slack. We have support for that in, in the cat, in the um, catalog repository. But here's here's a here's a package for push notifications. Of course, it supports all these target platforms. But again, we need integration tests. How do we integration test these things without the devices? Can we do we have simulators we can use? I don't know. We need integration tests. Um, are there other target put for, for push? If, you know, if, if, if um, Google or Apple change their, their toolkits, how do we test for that? How do we make sure we're current? Uh, those type of things. Uh, Jira, you know, yay, Jira. Um, I'd love to have some more, work you know, documentation is lacking, integration testing as always, uh, developer owner, but I'd love to create some samples around this. With WIS deploy, we can actually create some cool integrations. And you know, we, we talked about, Carlson and I have been talking about how do we get uh, the dev list working with Slack, our Slack channel. Well, what about Jira? If you have, you know, for, for Apache, can't we create a, a simple event-driven thing where if Jira comes in, we notify people in Slack or start, you know, notify a specific person who owns a, a given, you know, based upon the, the ticket that comes in, the information in the ticket. We route it someplace and send it to their favorite uh, notification system. Um, Creating some samples, some reusable samples that are configurable would be really cool in this area. Uh, RSS, um, we had a guy who, who started playing, uh, in a, he was an intern at IBM last year, and he's like, he wasn't even in any of our groups. He's like, hey, I thought, I found OpenWIS, thought it was really cool, I created this RSS package, so we, we accepted it. And it does have some integration tests, and um, we'd love if people wanted to expand this. It's not, it's not very configurable. So um, um, I would love to have some, some, some better configuration options for filtering out different, different feeds and based upon the, the values in the, the feed data. Uh, yep. Cloudint, um, this is, you know, from, uh, if you don't know what Cloudint is, it's, it's basically the commercial version of CouchDB. Um, uh, I'd love to have a generic 
CouchDB package, again, this talks to multipliers, wherever there's a data store, I'd love to have a package. And it's very simple. You have examples already, uh, and, and all you need is something that knows how to listen for events. Uh, either it's e either a queue integration uh, for the events coming off a specific database um, that leverages Kafka or whatever we have already, and is able to create a feed that ha is able to configure uh, the data coming in from, from that event source. Create hooks for us, basically, if hooks don't exist. General wish, wish list, <laughs> if I haven't covered them already. Um, more packages. Uh, we had a Twilio package. Somebody started to work on it, never, and for some reason abandoned it, so we basically deleted the repo. I'd love to have more packages. Um, so we can, we can create repos, no problem. We'll create a repo for you and work on it. You know, we might start in dev tools or someplace else, but you know, start it in your own GitHub repo. Maybe we can, you can help us work with the registry and so we can remotely bring it in, um, those type of things. Uh, the registry I talked about, you know, that's just an idea. It's getting started. I hope to start working on it you know, sometime next month when we finish our, our current work in the WIS deploy tool, uh, which, is, which is the foundation for the registry. Um, you know, if you have experience with, with the NPM registry, I'd love to have you work with us. You know, they use CouchDB as a backing. You know, how do we create a, a distributed registry? What's the correct API set do we use? Do we just reuse something? Do we take the NPM um, uh, HTTP standard for the registry and adapt it for our use? What, what's, the correct, what's the correct approach? Uh, more compositions. So I know that we have people who have been talking on our mailing list about how do we do things other than sequences? You know, how do we do different types of programming constructs, if then else blocks, write this act, run this action. How do we automate, perhaps, in, in, instead of embedding some of the testing of the data inside the actions, move it external? You know, maybe, we have a, maybe we can create an action that does the test for you, a generic test action or something, a switch statement. You know? how, do we, how, do we, how do we codify these things? And how do we make them part of our standard catalog? And how do we represent them in the manifest? How, in, in a, how do we say, uh, create a basically a pseudo uh, connector in our in our manifest format to to, uh, to conditionally execute actions based upon some input value. Uh, web actions, you know, I'd love to have more examples of web actions. We have we have no out of the box samples. We have web actions that are so cool. Um, how do we support more MIME types? How do we support you know different you know uh, different uh, headers? Um, Maybe there's some variants on web actions for different protocols, and I'm just thinking about that now. Um, Node-RED was mentioned. Uh, there's Node-RED work, but I, I know people have approached me about Node-RED, but we've had no conversations on the dev list. If you use Node-RED, there's a natural fit with serverless and OpenWhisk. Um, the idea that was floated to me, and I need to know, if, if, uh, I don't want to start the conversation, I'm trying to get people to talk about it on the dev list, is can we take, you already have sequences and things and graphic compositions in Node-RED if you're using uh, Node.js. Um, we can put, we can create a container that can run those, uh, an entire Node-RED uh, Node um, sequence or set of jobs inside of OpenWhisk in a container. That could be a, an invoker container in OpenWhisk. If that's, if that's, if you're working in, in Node and in, in Node-RED, Work with us. Come work with us. Uh, Jupyter Notebook, Notebooks. Ironically, the people next to us in the IBM booth are doing uh, Jupyter Notebook stuff. So um, I'd love to have people, uh, basically, if we can uh, map reduce a set of data and run functional uh, stuff on that data, that's serverless. So you don't have to worry about configuring all these servers and all these things that you, 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 know, uh, that you do currently with these notebooks. OpenWIS does it for you. All you need to do is point us to the data, create an event saying this data is ready for your function to compute on, and then you basically you're done. You notify some aggregator that the data is available after I've done applied my function to it. These are some really cool things we can do with with other Apache uh, projects. Um, so those are just, just kind of like my stimulating ideas of things that where I'd like I'd like to go. There are many many more. In fact, Carlos and I have been talking about starting uh, some lists for these ideas starting a low-hanging fruit type of thing for people who want to start with our projects, you know, you know point them to, to issues and things we have open or feature sets, where to get started, you know, based upon their skill sets. So uh, we hope to do that in the next few weeks, uh, perhaps on our CWiki, CWiki and on our link to our .org website. Um, and that's about all I, all I had for today. I mean, vital statistics, um, I grabbed that Monday, I think that number stars. 
we grow 10 to 20 per week. Uh, we've got, we have, the forks have gone up. Um, so we, we hover around 300. Um, contribution graphs, you can, uh, obviously GitHub, you can use all the things there to figure out how it's, but it's basically any contributors, you know, um, across all the repos. So we'd love to grow that. I think that this ecosystem mentality, we should have many, many more contributors, especially in the integration space with, with data, databases, queues, and packages, um, package implementations for, for other services. So I'd love, I'd love to see that grow. Um, that's why this whole session was given today. Um, uh, more information. Um, all this is from our .org site. So if you want to know how to contact us, obviously at DevList. Um, we have a public Slack channel. You click on the org site, it'll be auto-invited through an action. It's through an action. We're trying to use what we promote. So we were, we were excited about trying to figure out how we host an open WISC platform in, in Apache to do the things we talked about, how to, to actually use service actions uh, and maximize Apache infrastructure to do connect these things together, to connect our, our processes and workflows and tooling together as we, so we can better communicate and work together. Um, we try to add blogs. I mean, if, if you do things in OpenWhisk, we'd love to know about it. Um, we can add it to our, our Medium blog site. Videos, we have a video uh, uh, category for OpenWhisk. Uh, Stack Overflow, of course, we respond to. And of course, things that we, have, we, we, we are uh, monitoring all these things through, through Slack. So a lot of these channels come in, we get notified in Slack. If you submit a pull request, we get notified in Slack that a pull request has been issued and that if it's, if it's not been reviewed for several days, we get, we get another alert saying this pull request has not been reviewed. So we try to use OpenWhisk in our DevOps on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, so it, it, every day, not a day goes by where we can't think of how we could use OpenWhisk. We just lack the contributors to showcase these as, as sample applications that other people can use. So any questions? Yes. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on how you uh, like to see Node-RED integrating uh, with, with OpenWhisk? You said a little bit about uh, like the antithesis. Yeah, I'm, I, I'll, I'm, I'll miss, since I haven't refreshed myself on Node-RED for a couple of months, I'll probably misuse the semantics. But in, in Node-RED, you have a graphical set. I know there's a graphical interface where you can create compositions of, of their, their Node-RED nodes. I guess they're nodes. So, so so you can actually encapsulate that entire sequence of Node-RED um, nodes and their flows, their data flows, and package them up and run them in, in, in Node-RED packaged as, as a single invoker in, under OpenWhisk. And that's actually the, the, the author that comes straight from the creator of Node-RED with an IBM in, in, our, in the UK. That's our starting point. That would be our starting point. But the graphical UI, I mean, uh, they have a graphical UI, we don't. I mean, that's why I shot it from the audience. I think that you know, different consumers of this technology and the ideas and the community and ecosystem will only be generated once we have n not just a command line, but a UI as well. So, yeah, good question, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you very much.